We were making good progress with the clock that shows seconds, not the one that shows hours and minutes. No, no, this one, the unreasonable one. And you seem to be taking this too, too seriously because you are now asking me to show proper seconds with units and tenths of seconds. And that, that requires another one like this here next to it so we can show both digits over there. And that comes with its own real estate problems. A while ago, I already designed this marble swapping mechanism, which goes more or less here. And I even printed the ramp for it. Of course, these two don't align now, but... But there is a detail that all the seconds displayed in digital clocks keep constant. Both digits are shown next to each other. And with this contraption, I will need to leave a huge gap between both digits. And I don't know if you noticed, but that's not how we do things around here. So I have no other option. I will have to modify this so we can display both digits next to each other. This is not a bad idea, but every time that this display swings to this side, it enters the space that the other digit should occupy. So I got this idea. What if I do this really fast and use a single display? I think it will work if I do it fast enough. So let's get to it. For this new solution, I'm changing from swinging movement to linear movement, which will make it more compact. Although at, at this point, I don't think that that matters anymore. I just cut to length the linear rail, and I'm going to use this MGM 12 bearing blocks to move the display matrix back and forth. And I printed this frame to mount it. And now the display can move in a straight line. To be able to eject the marbles, I will add this comb to the frame. And now we can eject the marbles. the display will get the marbles from the ramps. And we agreed that both digits need to be next to each other. One here and the other one about here. But that's not true for the rest of the mechanism. This doesn't need to be close to the mechanism for the other digit. And there is stuff going on on this side of this mechanism that is going to be true and mirrored for the other one. So we can swap this ramp in here for this one. See, now we can have one digit here, the other one here, and this one will make the mechanism to be all the way here, leaving a lot of space here for other stuff that needs to be happening here. Now I'll make a, a support to get this hanging here. I'm going to use more 3030 aluminum extrusions, cut to length and tap on both ends. And I'll use a few 3D printed connectors to attach them to the front extrusion on the base. At some point, I will need a less convoluted way of connecting all of this, but for now, all of these will give me a base just on the right spot to, to attach the frame. And I added this interface layer in here to leave enough space for the marbles to go when I need to discard them. And now if I get some marbles in here, I can discard them. No, I can't. I, I should be able to discard this. It looks like I added some features to this display matrix and, and the marbles cannot go all the way in. So, so they get trapped between this plate and this plate and they, the plate cannot slide. But this is just a minor setback. I will quickly redesign this, reprint it and disassemble this and assemble it again. Let's try again. It works, but it could be smoother. It feels a little bit too tight. So I will add some washers in here to act as spacers, so it's smoother. And now that the display can move back and forth, we need to transform the rotational movement of the motor into this linear movement for which I printed this wheel in here. This wheel has a groove in it that matches the dimensions of this bearing. So the bearing can slide inside the groove. And there is a mount on the display slider just for the bearing. I can now get the wheel in here. I need to get this bracket in to hold the wheel from the other side. The next step is to transfer power from the motor 
to this gear in here and that's an extra load for this motor and I fear that this gear in here is, is gonna break at some point so I would like to make it from something stronger and that's where today's video sponsor PCBWay comes in handy I designed a new gear to be 3D printed out of metal and uploaded it to PCBWay's website I used the online viewer to check it to see if everything was okay selected aluminium as the material of choice selected the amount and placed the order the part got here in no time and the quality is top notch and PCBWay not only does 3D printing they also do CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding and a lot more as you can see the process is super easy and the parts are flawless so give PCBWay a try following the link in the description and now let's get some power from here to there I need a bracket in here for this gear that will transfer the power that comes from the motor and after all these changes it's not aligned with the motor anymore so I printed a few parts to make a cardan that will absorb the misalignment I printed this shaft in pure nylon which is quite flexible and I hope will absorb any impact during the rotation of this gear here which I don't think it's going to be smooth the wheel is jumping a bit whenever the bearing reaches this low point in here when it has to do the sudden change on direction right there and I think I can solve that by adding some weight, some mass to this wheel in here and I think I know how I can do that this wheel weighs 380 grams so the first step to add weight is to print a new one with more material increasing the infill etc that takes us to 540 grams but we can still do more by filling all these holes with screws and nuts a lot of them and all of that got us to 882 grams which is a total increase of 500 grams which hopefully will add enough inertia to make it a bit smoother Something is not right. I, I was uh, to clean my glasses. I was like at the rear with the computer, ramping up the speed, and I had gotten the elevator up to one link per second, which is just about what I need. And then I looked at the front, see this thing, and it was not. And that's uh, like. Everything is connected. Should be. I, I did the math. Did the, all the math. It's not working. Give me give me a second. Seventy-five? What the I think I've got it. Up notes. The cam stack spins at 0.1 revolutions per second and this gear in here has 40 teeth, which is connected to the white wheel. The white wheel is a 10 teeth to 50 teeth 5 to 1 ratio which spins at 0.4 revolutions per second the red one is exactly the same and spins at 2 revolutions per second the motor gear has 8 teeth and is spinning at 12.5 revolutions per second which matches exactly the speed that I was asking the motor to do to get 1 lift per second on the elevator then this transfer wheel in here is 20 teeth so it spins at 5 revolutions per second and as all of this is connected this one in here is also doing 5 revolutions per second this gear in here has 10 teeth and this one in here has 75 teeth and I cannot explain why so this one in here is doing 0 0.66 revolutions per second Sh should be 1 and the easy fix would be to change this gear in here for one that has 15 teeth instead of 10 but I don't think that the display slider is moving fast enough so I made a larger wheel 
with a steeper channel that will move the slider faster and added a lot more weight to it. In fact, I added so much weight that this wheel is now 1500 grams. So this is basically now a flywheel, 80 teeth instead of 75. So I will need a 16 teeth wheel in here that I have already printed on the core one in PC. So let me quickly swap these two and, and we'll see what breaks next. Making the wheel bigger diameter will increase its inertia so its rotation is more stable. But that also requires to change every single bracket and also change the display matrix as now the bearing placement changes. I took the opportunity to change the comb design to make the marble rejection smoother. And I just need to put everything back together and test it. things. This one spins now at the right speed, one revolution per second, and second one I will have to bolt this to something heavy because it was moving on the table because of the violence of this thing going back and forth. And I think the display now moves at the right speed, or at least I don't think that I can make it move faster without breaking something. And speaking of breaking, this is directly connected to the motor through this shaft in here, so if anything gets stuck on the display or on the wheels and this doesn't break it will explode so I, I made this which is a clutch that will release if something gets stuck and will let me reset it quite easily it's just a nylon part with a 12 millimeter steel shaft there is an hexagonal coupling between the nylon part and the red part and then I printed these two parts in here with two magnets embedded in them so they just try to get against each other and when you apply too much torque it releases hopefully avoiding like lots of pain and marbles and plastic everywhere this one is easy I just need to swap one for the other and just to test it if I block the gear from spinning the clutch releases uh, avoiding mayhem It seems that it disengages too easily, so I will add a spring to make it harder to disengage. like everything is going to fall apart so I will add a reinforcement arm here. It looks like it holds and everything spins at the right speed so let's throw in some marbles and see what happens. Thank you. 
this is... <laughs> It's, it's loud, it's scary, and it it's somehow works. I think I need to add way more rigidity to it because everything was flexing and marbles were flying everywhere. I have to say that I will try to tune everything so when the display is coming back, new marbles fall through the ramps and get in the holes at the right time so there will be no buffer marbles that can fly away and everything should be in the right place. So this should work. But it was quite brutal to see. But I, I'll take a victory when I get one. So that's it for this video. Thanks a lot to all my Patreons and members. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see how this ends. And now please go and make something!